When watching a movie, plots are usually pretty similar. There will be a conflict in the film, then that conflict grows. It continues to get worse until someone steps in to fix the conflict. The book of 1 Kings is much similar. David is king at the beginning of the book, but he is about to die. After him, Solomon, David's son, takes over. He builds the temple. However, from there, he makes some poor decisions. Then almost every king after him gets worse. They're often bringing in idol worship and turning away from God. Until finally, we get to King Ahab. Ahab becomes the climax as he is the worst king of all. However, much of his wickedness is due to his evil wife, Jezebel. Here's a quick rundown of this woman. Jezebel was the daughter of a Phoenician king named Esbael, so this made her a princess. Jezebel then got married to Ahab, the seventh king of Israel, and this made her a queen. Now, Jezebel was a worshipper of the Canaanite god of rain and fertility, Baal. She was an idol worshipper. She was a woman who was influential, powerful, and wicked. 1 Kings 21 verse 25 talks about both Ahab and Jezebel. It says, But there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord, because Jezebel, his wife, stirred him up. While Ahab is guilty of his own sin, much of his downfall was due to his wife, Jezebel. Jezebel was a pagan woman. She did not follow the God of Israel, but hated him. In 1 Kings 18, she purposely tries to kill the prophets of the God of Israel, a gross act of evil. It's unspeakable to think that Jezebel would stand in such bold defiance to the God of Israel, as she would seek to kill his servants. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 4, And when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifties in a cave and fed them with bread and water. So King Ahab didn't cut off the prophets of the Lord. Jezebel, his queen, did. In those times and in that society, do you know what it would look like for the king to be led by his queen? But nonetheless, Jezebel massacred the prophets of the Lord. The Bible also says in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 19, Now therefore send and gather all Israel to me at Mount Carmel, and the 450 prophets of Baal, and the 400 prophets of Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. The Bible says the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah ate at whose table? Not King Ahab? Not the head of the home? But at Jezebel's table. You see, you need to be careful when it comes to the spirit of Jezebel. It's a spirit that has a voice of influence and control. She overshadowed her husband undermined his authority, but she also incited her husband to evil because 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 25 says, There was none who sold himself to do what was evil in the sight of the Lord like Ahab, whom Jezebel his wife incited. There were a few times in the life of Ahab when it looked as if he would repent. There were even times when it looked like he wanted to follow the ways of God. However, every time there was a ray of sunshine. Jezebel quenched the hope. The most notable is the story of 1 Kings 21. In this chapter, there was a vineyard that was owned by a man named Naboth. Ahab wanted the vineyard and was even willing to buy it. Naboth rejected the offer because it was against the law of God for him to sell it. Ahab was very upset and went back to his palace to mourn. However, Jezebel took matters into her own hand and killed Naboth. She arranged for people to accuse Naboth, who was a righteous man, of cursing God and the king, which resulted in his death by stoning. So she falsely accused him, had him murdered, and stole his vineyard. That is manipulation at its peak. This leads to Ahab buying the vineyard for himself. Did Ahab kill Naboth? No, 
his evil wife Jezebel did. However, he could have rejected buying the vineyard and put his wife in jail for the murder of Naboth. Yet, due to his own evil pleasure and the evil hand of Jezebel, he gave in to his sinful desire. It seems almost like Ahab was a puppet in the hand of Jezebel. In 1 Kings 18, Elijah, who was a prophet from God, challenges the idol worshippers of Baal to see whose God is the real God. They see whose God can catch a bull on fire. Of course, the 450 prophets of Baal could do nothing because their God is not real. They tried for many hours and failed. Yet God set the bull of Elijah on fire after a single prayer from Elijah. He exposed the false gods by way of a contest between Baal and Yahweh, proving to all onlookers that the God of Israel is the only true God. He then ordered the prophets of Baal to be killed, which angered Jezebel so much that she then threatened to kill Elijah, which caused him to flee. We know Jezebel's end, which was prophesied by Elijah. She was thrown out her window by her servants and later trampled by horses and her body devoured by dogs. She had been given a chance to repent after she had heard of the outcome of the contest and the prophecy of her gruesome death, yet she chose to continue to walk in the way of darkness. Yes, Jezebel died and has long been forgotten by many. However, her spirit still exists today and can manifest itself in the behavior or actions of people around us. The story of Ahab and Jezebel is a story we must take note of. When we surround ourselves with evil people, it's likely we are going to make evil decisions. Their influence, and sometimes their manipulation, will cause us to walk in sin. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with the darkness? We must be careful not to marry someone who does not know the Lord. If we do, it is possible for them to draw us into evil. Of course, if you find yourself married to an unbeliever, you should not leave. However, you must be on guard that your spouse does not lead you astray, as Jezebel did with Ahab. And I want you to learn this. People often associate the spirit of Jezebel with sex and seduction and promiscuity. But I believe these are just some of the fruits of this spirit. At the core of Jezebel, at the core of this wicked spirit, is control. It's a controlling and manipulative spirit that takes people captive. It's a spirit that has no gender. Just because it's a spirit named after a woman, that does not mean it can't be found in men. As I've said, it's a spirit of control. And if you look throughout your life, it's usually the people who are power hungry or control mongers that turn out to be the most hurtful and nastiest people we have to deal with. And look at it this way. In the church, at the root of most conflicts, the issue is to do with control. Pastor versus elders, deacons versus choirs, this ministry versus that ministry. That's the spirit of Jezebel. Or how about in the home? How many conflicts in a marriage are about control? The Bible says, husbands love your wives. It does not say control your wives. It says love them. Do you love your wife, sir? Because if you want to control her, if you're trying to control what she does, what she says, who she's with and who she sees, then you, sir, are under the spirit of Jezebel. This goes for you too, ma'am. The Bible tells you to respect your husband, not try and control him. Don't try and bend his will to yours by manipulation. That is the spirit of Jezebel. And here's the thing about control. Here's why the spirit of Jezebel is so wicked and destructive. It wants to control, right? But let me ask you, does God control you? Does he? Does God make you do anything? 
Does he make you do his will? Does he make you want to love him and serve him? God does not force you to do anything. He wants you to be saved, but he won't force you. Jesus Christ will knock on the door of your heart, but he won't force you. The story of Jezebel also serves to warn us about people who have a religious spirit. Beware of people who are religious, but don't really know the saving power of Jesus Christ. They claim to follow him, but don't have a relationship with him. They fulfill religious duties, seek high positions, and think they are better than other Christians, but yet Christ is absent from their hearts. The Pharisees were very much like this, and we have our fair share of modern-day Pharisees. This false spirit of religion can be deceiving because it shows itself to be righteous when the opposite is true. Jezebel was dedicated to idol worship, and although the people we come into contact with are not Baal worshippers, they instead worship themselves and are as far away from God as the pagans. Watch out for these ones. They are like wolves in sheep's clothing. The last important characteristic of Jezebel was her disregard for and hatred of authority. In her mind, she had all the authority as the queen and didn't care for Elijah the prophet or any of God's people. She didn't listen to him or repent of her ways after he proved God's power and sovereignty. She also taunted Jehu, the military commander of Israel's army, right before he ordered her servants to throw her out. This spirit is also evident in our day, as some people want to chase after their own selfish gain, having no regard for order or hierarchy. Are there not people like this in our churches, in our families and communities? Be on guard against such people, for they would even question God's authority himself. While Jezebel got what she wanted most of the time by manipulating, scheming, deceiving, and controlling, at the end, she couldn't control her demise, which was due to her own resistance to God. We also see that power and status does not always mean that you are doing the right thing. Ahab and Jezebel had all the power in the world. Jezebel had close to a thousand prophets who ate at her table. They even had the power to murder someone for their property and get away with it. It is not fame, power, and status that lead to the good life, even if it's what the world tells us. As in the words of Jesus, the first will be last and the last shall be first. It is by being a humble servant that we truly find the good life. Most stories we read today have a climax and a resolution. However, in the book of 1st and 2nd Kings, there seems to be no resolution. Every now and then there would be a king who would be led by the hand of God. However, for the most part, all the kings were evil, Ahab being the one who caused the most evil. Matter of fact, the book of Kings ends with many who live in Israel going into captivity in the surrounding foreign nations. We will have to look hundreds of years into the future to find our resolution or happy ending. While most kings of Israel were evil and led the people of God away from God, there would be one who would come who led the people of God to all righteousness. Instead of being a king who sought power, he laid his power down to serve. While he deserved to punish his people for their sin, he decided to be punished for his people. We find the climax of the story not in the book of Kings, but hundreds of years later in the person of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of of lords. The spirit of Jezebel is strong, but the spirit of our God is stronger and it will overcome all evil. If you have the Holy Spirit, you will be able to recognize these characteristics and know how to deal with the people who have the spirit of Jezebel working in them. Pray that you might be led by the Holy Spirit.